Uh, hello, everyone, and uh, thank you for being here. Appreciate you taking time out of the middle of your day to come by and, and spend some time with us. Uh, we have some a nice announcement that we'd like to share with you. It's exciting for us. Uh, we're, we're very fortunate to uh, have this opportunity uh, to address uh, some renovations in Ohio Stadium uh, and as part of a, a longer term plan uh, that we unveiled uh, more than three years ago. So what we're announcing today is a four year renovation project uh, for Ohio Stadium that will preserve and upgrade parts of the iconic facility. As many of you know, we typically do not talk about capital improvements before they are considered by the Board of Trustees. Uh, however, uh, this topic is uh, one of uh, great interest uh, to our fans and to you. Uh, so we felt that prior to the board books coming out, as you know, will come out Friday prior to uh, the Board of Trustees meetings next week, uh, and this will be on the agenda. Uh, we felt that we wanted to provide this opportunity to answer questions now uh, so there's no interruption uh, with the trustees meeting around this particular item and uh, should it be approved. Uh, so since opening in two, 1922, Ohio Stadium has become a historic landmark uh, that means so much to so many people throughout the great state of Ohio. Uh, what we're announcing today is a multiple phase, multi-year project investing in modernizing and maintaining our historic Ohio Stadium. The project will re restore and recoat the 94-year-old concrete in, uh, in C deck. We will upgrade power distribution systems for the east, west, and south stands. We'll upgrade B deck to improve the experience for fans in obstructed view seats, including better lighting, larger television, an improved sound system, and better scoreboards. Uh, we'll renovate the premium seating area, which includes consolidating university suites into one university suite and adding 35 loge boxes and 12 luxury suites. We're committed to providing our fans, players, and coaches with one of the best facilities in the nation. We knew we had to get some of this done in order to avoid future erosion of the concrete on sea deck. So this concrete repair and waterproofing that we'll do will be significant to the long-term health of our stadium. At the same time, we have a, a number of fans who've been asking for more and more upgraded seating options. And we see this as a great opportunity to accomplish both. The project cost will be 42 million and will be funded by the Department of Athletics Auxiliary Funds uh, through a debt program that we worked out with our CEFO, Jeff Chattis on campus. Construction will begin in 2017. The university consolidation uh, expansion plan will be completed in August of 2017. And the CDEC concrete restoration will take place in phases between 2017 and 2020. The new suites and low seats will be completed uh, for the 2019 season. Uh, the improved ex fan experience will ex result in removal of some seats primarily in parts of BDEC where current view is less than ideal. We have a number of obstructed view seats there. So our overall seating capacity will remain higher than it was in 2014. And if you think back and remember, we added 2,600 seats to the south end zone in anticipation of possibly doing this plan. So beginning in 2018, our seating capacity will be at 102,854. Seats slated to be removed during the renovation will remain available for single game purchase this season. So we're committed to completing this project in the most fan friendly manner as possible. Uh, we'll be careful as we, we manage this renovation throughout the seasons. The expansion of premium seating will also allow us to provide spaces for non football events such as weddings, lunches, banquets and corporate meetings. With a structure of Ohio Stadium significant, as significant as it is, it's important that it is maintained for future generations. And that is that any renovation that we do has to take into account the building history. So we work closely with the historical society on what we, what we do. Uh, this total plan, uh, in, in my view, uh, will 
significantly enhance our opportunity as we move forward and into the future schedules that we have in football to make sure that our fans have a fan-friendly environment and allow us to continue to provide remarkable experiences for our fans. So I know you have the release, and it has a little more detail in the release than, than what I provided you. So at this time, I'll open it up for, for questions, and you can just fire away, and we'll go from there. And there's some microphones around if you have some questions. So Gene, <clears throat> will there be times during football season, during games, when fans will notice construction or be affected by the construction? Will there not be things happening in That's the fall? Correct. Yes. Times? So uh, our hope is that for the university suite that will actually consolidate some academic suites into it, uh, we'll be able to start construction at the end of the season and then have it done by the start of 17 season. So that portion should not uh, any, shouldn't impede anything at all. Uh, but yes, when we do the low seats and the suites, which happen to be an extension of the suites on the northwest B deck area, going around the northwest corner of the stadium, uh, during the 17 season and 18 season, you'll see some construction. Is that about right, Donnie? 17, 18 season, you'll see some construction, and we'll work around that. Uh, Gene, is it uh, the way you balance the revenue and stuff, will you get the revenue back based on the number of seats you're losing? I mean, how, how have y'all played that, I guess? Yeah, during that time frame, there we'll have a, a loss of about $1.8 million uh, with the seats that will be in construction. Uh, we built that into our financial plan. Uh, but obviously, when the suites and the loges come online, we'll replace that. But that money will be used primarily to pay off our debt. Uh, they'll pay off the loan that we put in place to fund uh, the, the stadium projects. Yeah, a question about the last renovation project was nearly $200 million. And I know that they sold bonds or whatever to uh, mm -hmm. finance that. Is, has that been completely uh, paid off at this point, or those bonds are continuing over a 20 yeah, they or 30 year period? Yeah, they go out to 20, 32, or 33, somewhere Okay, in there. so this is something in addition. Shorter term, yes. Shorter term. Right. And in terms of the loge boxes and luxury suites, do you feel there is a market to add more of that product to the, to the yeah, marketplace? We had to hold ourselves back. I mean, the, the suites, we have a waiting list, and so we're very confident that the suites will sell immediately. Um, the loges uh, were something that our, our team studied for a long time. Uh, we looked at other schools in across the country that's done it, um, and it's unique for Ohio Stadium, but we know that those will probably sell pretty fast as well. Um, it, it's, it's just something new that we haven't had uh, in our facility. So uh, we thought we could do more, but I felt like we would be uh, in, impeding on the historical architecture of the stadium if we, if we kept going around and eventually would have hit the student section. So we stopped where we stopped. And just last thing, the B deck uh, improvements, um, were those things that were that came to the department from uh, users, fans who've mm -hmm. had those experiences and, yep. and suggested, why don't you do this with B deck? Yeah, over because the years, it yeah. is a unique experience under uh, the roof, but obstructed and everything else. Yeah, most of this will start on the east side and, and, and it'll spill out as, as we go around. But you're exactly right. Over the years, this is response to uh, concerns that people have shared over the years. And there's places where people can't see TVs, can't see the scoreboard. So we're trying to address that issue. The sound system is muted in certain areas. We're trying to sound, figure, figure that out. So yeah, we feel very comfortable we're going to solve a lot of those issues. Gene, is, uh, is Ohio Stadium the right size now in terms of seating capacity? Are you guys comfortable with this and I guess if whatever slight reduction this is or do you envision like no there's a day when we want to get uh, 120,000 or something or is this right this is right yeah we you know we're we're very careful uh, with making sure that we whatever we do uh, aesthetically fits uh, what we have in place uh, the renovation that was done prior to my arrival of Don Paco and his team uh, marvelous job and we want to keep the integrity of that uh, so we intend to just kind of stay in this area. You know, at some point in time, you may do something different with loges in a different area based upon what we learn. 
Uh, but that's not in our plans right now. This is part of a plan we discussed prior to putting in the 2,600 seats. So at one point during 14, after the 14 season, we were up to 104,000. We knew if we do this plan, we'd go back down to 102. And we're comfortable with that because that's what we were before. So um, I'm okay with where we are. Uh, we were able to provide some remarkable experiences in some of our non-conference games for single game purchasers, our Buckeyes Cares program. Uh, we have the ability to bring in some young people from the community that, that never get a chance to sit in our stadium and they live right next door. So I'm comfortable with our numbers right now. Can you kind of touched on this. You had the major renovation 15 years ago. Long term, after this is done, what do you think will be needed uh, to make sure that that stadium, the stadium remains in good shape for a long time? Well, one of the things that we're doing here, and I kind of glossed over it, is, is we're adding actually three transformers to the stadium to increase our, our power. Um, and so uh, we've added a lot uh, of voltage in the stadium over the years, the new scoreboard, ribbon boards, and a number of different things, uh, Levy concessions and, that came in and, and added some things. So um, hopefully uh, over time we'll, we'll get to a point where we'll have to replace some of those visuals, some of those that the scoreboard and things of that nature, and uh, that will have an effect on it. But uh, we do not have a plan for anything right now, but just kind of looking down the pike, I would imagine somewhere along the line you you do something different with, with those type of things. To sum up, though, did, is, it, is it to the point now to where chasing just the big number of attendance is, uh, and I'm not sure y'all ever considered that, but to where we're one of the you know, second or third largest stadiums in the country, that doesn't really matter as much anymore? Mm -hmm. No, it, it doesn't. I think we, uh, we're comfortable where we are. Um, you know, we... You know, we're an interesting uh, setup in our stadium. If you look at our seating chart uh, compared to most schools across the country, um, they're not s seated the way we're seated. You know, we provide 15,000 tickets to faculty and staff. Uh, we provide 30,000 tickets to students. And so we provide tickets to Alumni Association. We provide tickets to long-term season ticket holders. We have a donor section. So we have a lot of different areas that are a lot of different categories for, for our fans. Um, most stadiums don't seat this way. Uh, so it, it, I, I'm very comfortable with our numbers. Um, the, the dynamics are just changing with fan attendance across the country. I think we need to be careful. Uh, so I, I think we're in, we're in a good, shop, good space where we are with our numbers. Do these go primarily for the football experience, or do they lend themselves to yes. other uses of the stadium you that you've placed as a priority, and if so, how? There you go. So I imagine those low seats are going to be awesome for concerts. I mean, it's the, the country fest. Those low seats will be phenomenal. Just so the way they're located, the way they seat, and the way the stage will be set, probably on the 30, 35 five yard line, those low seats are going to be really the coolest thing. And so, yes, uh, we feel confident that the, even the new suites and, uh, are going to be an, an additive uh, for our concerts as well. If you look at, again, where the stage is, sits, the suites, the university suite, and, and suites to the south end, have a, they can't see the stage. So those additional suites provide us an opportunity for people to, to have those and, and see the stage even better. So, yeah, it's going to add a, a whole lot more to, to the auxiliary, the ancillary events that we attract. Gene, is there a wait list now for people wanting to buy suites, yep. loges, et cetera? I mean, yep. what, and what kind of list? Are we, can you give me an ex extent of the list or at least the... It's large. It's large. Yeah. I mean, in other large. words, you, you have no... Qualms about this, these will sell out. No, we're, we, uh, we have a system that uh, in place that our development team, uh, working with our ticket office design uh, to approach uh, people who are currently in suites and, and the people who are on a suite list uh, based upon a point system. So uh, at some point in time, they'll get moving on that and, and uh, we'll end up filling them up. Back here. Uh, I know most renovations have a shelf life. How long do you think this will? keep the shoe in the kind of shape that you want it in. Uh, you mentioned that there are some obstructed view seats. I mean, right. there are other areas of the stadium you want to tackle down the road after this yeah. renovation? Well, I, you know, I probably have to defer to, to Don, our facility guy, but I've always been more concerned uh, with the concrete 
uh, restoration project. You know, we, we spent about $4.8 million and we did uh, ADEC in that area. Uh, CDEC, if you ever spend the time walking around CDEC, uh, you see that the integrity in, in the concrete there is challenged in a lot of different spots. So if many of you have traveled around the country and been in stadiums and you looked up when you were walking around and, and you see where concrete has, has been challenged. And so we want to we want to get to a spot where we don't have that. Uh, so that's been uh, one of my priorities uh, for a long time working with our facilities people. So I would imagine, and this is they're usually a 10 year fix. So I'm imagining at some point in time there'll be something about the infrastructure that we'll have to, to have to deal with. Uh, right now it's just not at the top of our priority. We gotta fix, we gotta make sure this concrete's in place. So <clears throat> Gene, this is I guess more of a theoretical question, but in your long range planning, does it ever come up the idea of a day when Ohio Stadium is not the home of the football team, when you build a new football stadium? I mean, the things almost, you are, I mean, you're renovating, you're expanding, you're doing yeah. this, but you are, this is the place. This is the place. Yeah, I've, that's an interesting dream to have there, Doug. No, I, you know. <laughs> I mean, could, yeah, I, it's almost 100 years old. Can it live? Yeah. Can it be 200 years old? I don't, I don't even know. Yeah, Donnie, what is it? What's the life lifespan of a stadium? So 2001, that added 75 years of life. So I won't be here. <laughs> you guys might. You young puppies might, but this old man won't be. <laughs> you're looking down the road and we're discussing the stadium and money and all that as long as your ad is a naming rights deal for the stadium something you would rule out something you would consider what's your position yeah, on that it's funny i've never been approached with that i understand prior to my arrival there was a consideration of something and uh but no i you know i don't i don't see that happening i really don't uh i don't see someone coming forward with the type of number that would make me even think about it so uh, we have a brand uh, that's Ohio Stadium. Uh, it's owned by the people. You go, you guys know the history. You go back to the fundraising in 88 counties, and so I have a hard time getting there, uh, especially because we've been blessed to have the great support of Buckeye Nation through ticket sales and and Buckeye Club membership and donations to our other facilities and and our TV contract and all of our partners that we have in place. I don't see us in a spot where we need to do that. Uh, unless we needed to do it for uh, the educational mission of the institution around scholarships for students and affordability, things of that nature. But for the athletic department, I don't think we need to make that sacrifice. Thank you. You guys have a good day.